the prayer skill is arguably one of the most important available in the entire game, allowing players to protect both themselves and their items from disaster, while also allowing them to deal incredible amounts of damage. In this series I'll be using it to the fullest while trying to complete some of the most difficult PVM challenges and making sure an altar is always close by. This is my Altar Chunk Iron Man. All right, so with a few prayer levels under our belt, it's time to head up to the uh, Ferox Enclave and start gathering bones to sacrifice to the Chaos Altar. I am going to make one real quick pit stop in Varok, though, because at the fine clothing shop here, they do sell priest gowns, which I think will give me a plus six prayer bonus, so that'll be a really nice uh, addition on top of this bronze mace. So let's go ahead and turn on the run, turn on the prayer, and get moving. Once I get a hold of the robes, I don't think there's anything else I need to do in Varok right now. Uh, I think I'll just head straight for the Enclave. It'll be a really easy run, since I know I can make it through at least one chunk with these prayer points as it is right now. The ge or the, uh, the priest robes will hopefully let me get through maybe two, two and a half. I guess it just depends on my prayer level at the time. But see, a nice, safe, and easy trip. The other thing um, I kind of looked into all along the way here, I thought about getting the Chronicle Teleport book at some point, because it actually drops me out right here. The only thing I've seen before is that it, it doesn't always put you on the spot directly, so I'm kind of worried that I might end up in the dark zone over here, like just right up against the guild. But as long as I have my prayer on before I teleport, it won't be really that big of a deal. Got my prayer points refilled, and I was actually taking a look around this chunk. I think I'm, I think I'm going to choose to unlock this one sooner rather than later. There's actually a lot of really useful things here. I mean, the agility course, the staff shop, the runes. And especially, I'm, I'm going to need the teleport uh, into the, the Rune Essence dungeon eventually when I do that quest. So it might be nice to just have that unlocked in general. I don't know if... Uh, I, I haven't used these shops in a long time. I don't know if they carry anything, like, really useful. But, I mean, it would just be nice to have that option. It's a real shame I can't use the T-Stall, though, for, like, some, some other thieving levels under the, other than uh, just pickpocketing men. But I can always head over to East Ardy and deal with that anyway. So let's go ahead and turn the prayer back on. And I got my run on. And let's go ahead and get these robes picked up. And uh, like I said before, once I have these, I'll probably just go ahead and go right for the Enclave. I can't think of anything else I need to stop off for right now. So once I make it to the safe area up here, I think we'll just move right along to the altar, restore my prayer points again, and just get going. I really wish I could train agility right now, though. I mean, it not having run energy outside of the Enclave is going to be such a problem. And I, I hope I can find a way to get it trained up early instead of having to wait until I can access, like... The, uh, the Brimhaven, Brimhaven Dungeon or one of the, uh, the more difficult areas to get to. So I was right about the priest robes. They actually do provide a uh, plus six, which it turns out, I guess, every plus three or I guess just plus one must equal a second. Because if I turn on my prayer from before, it actually tells me I have 44 seconds left over the 36 that I used to. So that is a huge bonus. That gives me a ton of time, especially just to run through one chunk. Yes, yes, I know the wilderness, blah, blah, blah. Once I actually get up to the Chaos Altar and the Enclave, I'll probably go ahead and switch over to a free-to-play world. I mean, this far down in the wilderness, there's, like, no risk I would get PK'd by anyone, especially with my low levels. But once I get up to the Chaos Altar itself, I mean, if there's somebody up there that's really determined to screw with low, uh, lower-level accounts, they're definitely going to find me and take care of that. So, yeah, it's, and it, it's such a shame. I can't use uh, the or I can't use the Chaos Altar in a free-to-play world, though the... Uh, the 700% boost just doesn't work, so that's kind of unfortunate. But it's not too bad of a trade-off, especially with playing this low level of account. I really shouldn't have too much of a problem. This is pretty great. There's actually a lot more bone spawns here than I thought there were initially. It, it's just such a shame. Like, there's not even a single big bone spawn out here. But, I mean, it, saving a lot of time not having to do it through combat is definitely going to help, especially being this close to a bank and then just shooting right over to the Chaos Altar. That will be pretty nice. The respawn timer doesn't seem too bad. I figure if I just do some walking laps, I'll be able to get them gathered up pretty quick and, and let them respawn in time. So it'll take a little bit, and then we'll go ahead and move along right onto the Chaos Altar. I think it's time we actually go ahead and unlock another chunk for this account. I was taking a look at the path I'm going to take to the Chaos Altar, and it's a little further than I thought it was. Like, running through two chunks won't be so bad. But I'm kind of concerned about, like, the bottom of the curve of this hill and getting up through that. Plus, I have no run energy, so by the time I actually get to the Chaos Altar, even if I wait a little bit, I'm just going to be spending a ton of time waiting up here for it to come back so I can run down here to the uh, Rejuvenation Pools. 
So actually what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock the chunk right here that has uh, all the bandits. This will cut my trip down significantly because all I have to do is run up next to the graveyard. And uh, the nice thing too is this shop right here is also uh, the NPC will buy things from you at high elk prices. So that might actually be really helpful to get me some money early on. So, yep, I think this will be the second chunk we actually go ahead and unlock. And that makes 20 prayer. This is actually a pretty important level because I uh, do unlock proselyte armor. So when I eventually do recruitment drive, that'll be weirdly and sadly some of the best melee gear I have for quite a while simply because of the prayer bonus. So that'll be really nice to have. Well, I knew it was going to happen eventually, but there's my first PKer. That's actually kind of sad, all just for a bunch of regular bones, but nope, no big deal. Grab some more uh, priest robes, grab another bronze mace, and get right back to it. That's 30 prayer. We're on the home stretch now, just about two and a half inventories to go. And that's 31 prayer. As much as I would love to rush right over to the monastery and pick up my robes, I actually want to take my holy symbol with me at the same time so I can just do it all at once. Uh, but actually, in order to get the Holy Symbol, I'm going to have to get a few crafting levels in and head over to East Arty. So, as soon as I get the hell out of here, I'll go ahead and explain exactly how I'm going to pull that off. Before I could head to Arty, I needed to get a small cash stack going to pay for the Young Strunk symbols and boat rides, which would eventually take me from the shipyard to Remington. And I found that the easiest way for me to do that was gathering steel plate legs in the wilderness, which spawn in the ruins north of the small cemetery. Unfortunately, my prayer does get turned off if I world hop, so I could only run one pair at a time and I decided to do a full inventory worth before selling them at the newly unlocked bandit camp near the Enclave, which ended up giving me a little over 15k. I also plan to buy the Chronicle and some pages for it after getting my holy symbol and monk robes. That way when I start questing in the next episode, I have an emergency teleport just in case I run out of prayer points sooner rather than later and risk some more valuable items. I'll definitely be coming back for more eventually unless I can find an easier way to make gold this early on. I'm not too familiar with how normal Iron Man accounts make their first bit of gold, but maybe I can find something else when I unlock more chunks. To actually get myself into East Arty is a pretty straightforward trip. Starting at the Enclave, all I have to do is run down into Edgeville and pull the lever which teleports you into the deepest part of the wilderness. Pulling it again will actually teleport you into a small hut near the castle. So until I can progress far enough to complete the easy diary and get the cape for free teleports to the monastery, this is going to be my best option. Thankfully, I won't be coming back here for too much right now, except maybe to buy up a bunch of cakes from the bakery stall. That way I have some decent food for some combat training or any hard quest bosses I run into, depending on what I decide to do. Getting other teleports is definitely going to become pretty essential for this account when I start doing more content. Having that go home button is a nice safety net, and it will add just a bit of a challenge since I'll need to carry some form of it around me when I'm traveling into faraway chunks, which takes up inventory slots. Magic training is pretty high on the priority list along with Herblore, so over the course of the next episode or two I'll be taking a more serious look at what my current objectives are and the best chunks to go along with them. Right now it's more about testing my boundaries and figuring out how much I can do without having to dedicate a ton of time to extra skill training. So this is a pretty good example of me getting way too far ahead of myself when it came to prepping the boat trips which would eventually end up with me arriving on Entrana. I looked up the price of the charter ships beforehand and assumed 2400 gold was going to be enough, and it actually turned out to be complete overkill. I didn't know you could go straight to Remington from the shipyard at first, I thought I had to go to Brimhaven, then to Port Sarum with a charter boat. So after buying the Youngstrung symbols and being short a whole 4 gold for what would have been the charter payment, it turned out I didn't need anywhere near that much anyways. But it worked out in the end since I also forgot to even bring the buckets along which I need on Entrana to gather up the sand for making beer glasses to start my crafting training. I did end up stopping off at the Remington General Store after restoring my prayer points when I showed up on the boat, and I ended up buying the buckets I need before finally going over to the boats at the port. I also wasted a bit of gold because for some reason I thought I could just buy and open a bucket pack and have a full inventory instead of ending up with 100 noted ones. Thankfully though there is a deposit box right near the Entrana boat, so I could just toss everything else inside, including my bronze mace since I couldn't take it to Entrana anyway, and then I could take off. Thankfully I was close enough to an ultra chunk the entire time or I probably would have actually ended up having to drop everything and go back to Artie to do it all again, and that would have just been a huge waste of time. While I was gathering up seaweed to make soda ash, I noticed that this tiny piece of Entrana weirdly isn't in the safe chunk. 
I could just include the entire island as safe, but there's nothing I actually need XP-wise from that little cutoff section, so I'm really not too worried about it. It didn't take long to get 16 crafting, and I also took a second to grab some raw chicken while I was here, since I'll need it for a druidic ritual anyway. So with 31 prayer and 16 crafting taken care of, all I need are two balls of war from the sheep pen and lumbridge, and it'll be time to head for the monastery. So after a quick little trip down uh, through the enclave and through the wilderness to the monastery, I can finally string these bad boys up, get them blessed by Brother Jared, and then I can grab my monk robes, and that will be that grind all taken care of. Okay, with that out of the way, let's go grab our monk robes, and that, I think, is going to be it for episode two. With this many prayer levels and uh, this huge, huge bonus to our prayer points, I think on the next episode we can finally start doing some quests. I would love to get, like, Restless Ghost, Druidic Ritual, probably Rune Mysteries out of the way, so I think that's definitely going to be the plan. I just want to see... Oh, I'll plus 19. Yeah, that is that is going to make such a huge difference, even when I actually get my overhead prayers. But, yeah, I think uh, next time we'll just start taking care of some quests. <laughs>